Hey guys, good morning. I'm working on our P48 project, which is our 1948 Chevy 3100. These are the coils that came with our um, Helex IFS front suspension, Mustang II front suspension. And um, they look to be pretty decent coils. I've done my math here and used a coil calculator I found online to determine the spring rate. Um, we've got a 267 pound per inch spring rate. So that's a good rate for our truck. Um, I've looked up the specs on the Chevy 3100 and what, uh, what the original specs are stated as from the manufacturer is a total vehicle weight or gross vehicle weight of 3,460 pounds, um, 1,790 pounds on the front end and 1,440 on the rear end. So that would be with the straight six 213 cubic inch um, motor that was in there, the I-beam axle, the solid axle, and the leaf springs, which all of those comp components were very heavy, plus, uh, you know, a 30 inch tire on a steel wheel. So my guess is that the P48 here is probably sitting around 1,600 pounds for an 800 pound corner weight on the front in that ballpark, I would guess. Um, I don't have scales, so I can't measure it for sure. Um, but that's what us hot rodder guys do, right, is we uh, make our best guess, um, cut it long, and work our way down to our final fit. That's, that's the best we can do. Um, so I've measured at ride height what my compressed coil length should be, and we're targeting 9-inch compressed. So these ha coils have a free length of 13 inches. So in order to compress this down to 9 inches at ride height, um, you know, that's 4 inches of compression. And the math doesn't work out in our favor in this case. Uh, at a 267 pound per inch coil rate, which I calculated by measuring the outside diameter of the springs, which is 4.75 inches, uh, the diameter of the wire, which is 0.550, uh, and the number of active coils in the spring. And active coils are coils that don't touch each other um, and aren't, uh, you know, in a progressive stack. So these are straight rate coils. They don't have any, uh, there's no progression to these coils. And this bottom one here is not active. The flat spring on the bottom is, is not an active. Well, so if we calculate from the end of that flat spot here to our first active coil, we get six and a half, approximately six and a half, a little bit over that um, active coils in our spring. So if you do the math on that with our spring rate of 267 pounds per inch, uh, it says that an 800 pound corner weight, which is what I'm guessing uh, the, the uh, P48 is here, uh, is going to compress 2.99 inches um, on this spring. So that's three inches and we need four inches of compression because so, we need to get down to a nine inch compressed height. Um, everything I've read online kind of confirms my, my ballparks and guesstimates here uh, and states that these compress down to around 10 inches um, on the front. So that's, uh, that's reassuring that, that we're in the right ballpark. Uh, we just got to fine tune it. So I'm thinking that what we're going to have to do is trim off a half a coil to get down to our 9 inch compressed height um, on the front of the P48. Unfortunately, that's all guesstimation. So um, the best thing to do is to take off a quarter of a coil and then trim down from there. Because if we cut half off and we stick it in there and we're lower than that um, and it compresses down to, you know, uh, an 8 inch compressed height, then we're kind of kind of stuck with it. So uh, there's no way to, to add coil length. You might be able to use a spacer or something to regain some of that height, but um, you've effectively increased your spring rate by shortening the length of the spring and it's going to ride like crap. So... You know, we're not looking for a bouncy uh, low rider here. We want something that's comfortable and nice, and we don't want to affect the spring rate any more than we have to. Um, so 
ideally I would like to not have to cut the coils at all and my first install here is going to be um, just the straight coils without modifying them so I'm going to put them in there at full length and see uh, if we settle down to uh, three inches of compression uh, which will give us a 10 inch compressed overall length. If that's the case then my measurements of the weight of the P48 are pretty close and I'll know that we can take off another half inch or half coil and and be right where we need to be. So uh, that's my that's my project for today is to uh, pull the wheel off uh, wheels off on both sides um, stick both coils in there and uh, put the wheels back on and lower the weight of the, the truck onto the springs and see how far they set. Now I, I know that uh, we're lacking radiator, we're lacking you know the front hood, uh, the grill and all the related bracketry that needs to go on the front plus the uh, bumper so we're probably lacking a good uh, couple hundred pounds of weight. Um, so I'm going to put them in there, see how it compresses, and uh, then I'm going to bounce on the front of it and see if I can get it to, to settle in as much as possible and go from there. Um, if that's the case, I will probably uh, cut a quarter of a coil off and leave it until we get the truck more uh, assembled. So we get more pieces on the truck so we can get a more accurate weight maybe drive it around a little bit at that height and, and hope that they, the springs settle in a little bit. They're going to have a little bit of settling. What I've read about these springs is they settle around a half an inch. Um, so that may be the way that we go here. Um, if I stick them in and they go, go down to three inches as I anticipate, um, then I'll probably leave them for a while and see if uh, see if they settle in that extra half inch and then trim a quarter of the coil off and be good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and get started working on this here and I'll set the camera up so you guys can watch me uh, bust my knuckles.
So this is our uh, current height on the coils. And that's right where we want it to be. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come down another inch, inch and a half. And it should settle in right, uh, right where we want it. So that's going to wrap it up for me for today, guys, on the P48 project. Uh, I, I got lucky on these front coils uh, in that they settled in right at ride height where I wanted them to be a little bit higher than ride height. So as the springs uh, settle into place a little bit and sag a little bit, they will um, it'll come down a little bit right where we want it. So I'm not going to have to touch them. I don't have to shorten them, and um, you know that's a big plus in my book. So save me a lot of time. So I've got the front end all put together, uh, suspension's in on both sides, truck's sitting on springs right now which is nice. I'm waiting on the 2 inch drop blocks and U-bolts that I ordered uh, to come in so I can complete uh, the rear axle ride height and uh, then I can fab up uh, our shackle mounts, shackle hangers in the back and uh, you know get, get the suspension work done. I started planning out my cuts here in the front uh, of the truck to clear our power rack and pinion unit that uh, we got with our Mustang 2 conversion. Uh, I'm going to have to trim a little bit of the factory front cross member that exists, uh, which used to hold the front body mount on the 213 straight 6. And uh, that section is no longer needed and it's in the way uh, of the rack and pinion. So in order to get everything installed and cleared and fitted correctly, I've got to cut, do some more cutting and grinding. Um, so I'm just going to rough cut that for now and um, trim it back, clean it up with a flap disc and um, get, that, get the steering installed uh, so I can make our steering shaft with our universal joints. Um, I also talked to a uh, buddy of our channel here uh, who's got a rear drive shaft that we're going to be using for the truck. We're going to have to have it shortened a little bit. So I'll be taking that to a driveline shop and having it turned uh, to the right length. Uh, and I've got to cut out a small section of the floor where I'm going to tunnel for that drive shaft because I've got the transmission sitting so far back and uh, so high up on the cross member, the transmission cross member, that I have to I have to tunnel the the floor of the cab, the cab floor, in order to get my drive shaft enough clearance. So it's pretty minor. Uh, it's going to be a small tunnel, maybe. 10 inches wide, um, that'll just give me enough room there for the for the front of the drive shaft to clear. So we're getting a lot closer to getting this thing drivable. Um, once I get done with steering and the drive shaft tunnel and get the rear suspension settled, then it'll be on to brakes, uh, running new all new hard lines and uh, all new flex lines, braided flex lines to the axle. And we'll be that much closer to getting this thing drivable. I can't wait to for that first drive to take it around the block and see how everything runs and shifts and uh, it's exciting it's exciting so uh, that's gonna that's it for me for today guys so please uh, if you like the project if you like the video content please click like and subscribe 